I am Chris, Jazz Sequence on the Internet. I'm joined, as always, by Gary, who is a senior cabinet official and the director of Homeland Security, and Allison, who is a journalist and specializes in weird news. And the, uh, the big news for Toronto, of course, is that your team lost last night. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Sad, sad day, but... I caught I caught about the last fifteen minutes of the of the match and then uh, the PK shootout because they did actually come back to uh, tie it on aggregate uh, over two games, but then the the PKs uh, they kind of sucked at. Well, you know that's uh, par for the course. It's yeah, like we we uh, gain speed and then. Uh lose it really rapidly once yeah. everyone's pretty excited about it yeah yeah what's a pk and what penalty kick penalty kick yeah. soccer so so what happens um if if there is a soccer match where uh a, a winner is not determined within the 90 minutes and uh, a winner needs to be determined because most soccer matches it doesn't matter if it ends in a tie but for things like championships it does matter who wins or if there's like a tournament and it matters who advances right so if there is no uh winner determined through the full 90 minutes in this case it was uh, over two legs so it was 90 minutes in two games uh two 90 minute games um and in this particular competition usually there's there's extra time which is a 15 minute period and then a, a break and then another 15 minute period and then if you still haven't uh determined a winner then you go to penalty kicks but in this competition um they kind of changed things up and went straight to pks after uh after the 90 minute full time uh which is good because it's really draining and horrible it's kind of like it's kind of a grind to get through that uh 120 minutes if, if you have to do that um, so that was actually a good thing, but, but you really, PKs is, is as much a mind game as, uh, a, a, as judgment of skill. Um, because it's just, it's, it's the only thing in soccer that is, um, one player against one other player. Like everything else in soccer is like, you're playing as a team, you're playing as a unit, and this is pretty much the only thing where it's just one, like whoever's kicking the ball and, and the keeper. Um, and there's all sorts of like things that keepers do to psych out their opponents and things that the opponents do to psych out the keepers. And it's, it's just, it's, a lot, it's really weird. It's really weird. And it's also like, well, like, like so many sports when it comes down to that, my anxiety levels spike. Yeah. And there's nothing like your heart drops. And like when the goalie dives, the completely wrong direction and like yeah and oh. alex bono was pretty awful <laughs> um yeah i know i mean and i i feel that too because um when uh rsl went to the mls championship we went to pks and it, there was i think we went to nine pks um because usually usually it, it's it usually goes up to five if it's a and it's usually best of five so if there's a if there's an obvious winner within the five then it's done so so last night it went to four and and chivas uh had had scored all their four and toronto had only scored two um so they chivas won um if if Toronto had scored a third, then it would have continued until there is a best of five, basically. Um, and but for for when for the MLS Cup in 2013, um, it went to nine. It was almost at the point where the goalkeeper was going to come out and take a penalty kick, which I've actually seen once. Um, that's that's ridiculous. Um, so. So yeah, and I totally feel that anxiety. Like I know exactly what that feels like. And when I went to PKS, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not my team, so I didn't. I didn't feel as as uh, much anxiety as as I would have if it was my team. It's just sort of representing my league, I guess. Yeah. Small amount of anxiety. So, so this is a this is binary jazz, a podcast about soccer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the funny thing is, is that I also, I think there was also like a hockey game for something yesterday, which is, I think, probably. And, and, did, and did Toronto lose? I don't, I think, I think so, but I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> That's fair. I think it might have been against Boston, so I would assume we lost, because I feel like Boston is probably good, but. Sports! <laughs> <laughs> Allison knows them sometimes. <laughs> That's okay. Now that the CCL is done, we don't have to talk about soccer. <laughs> Am I talking about soccer? I just, I just have nothing to add. <laughs> At least not until the World Cup. <laughs> oh, but then the World Cup will be so good. Oh, yeah. Except that we won't be in it. So, so we'll have nothing to lose in the World Cup. Well, we will have nothing to lose. It, it, Canada isn't, isn't in it either, is it? are they? I don't think so. I, I can't imagine that they qualified and the U.S. didn't. No, our men's how, team. How would we know? Great. Yeah, your men's team is pretty awful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like that they're really that bad. They have a lot of good players. It just they could, they've they never been able to sort of bring it together. And again, we're talking about soccer. Okay, we need to t- pick another subject. So <laughs> normally what happens on the show is uh, if you, you know, if you've gotten to episode uh, 10, uh, uh, 11, 11. Uh, at this point and still haven't figured it out, uh, what normally happens on the show is is that uh, Allison brings us a topic that we've never heard, and we have to uh, talk about it, whether we know anything about the topic or not, and generally uh, we don't. So that's what's supposed to be happening right now. Uh, so I will allow that to happen and not hijack the show by talking about <laughs> CONCACAF Champions League. That's that's the spinoff version of the show where everybody knows about one topic except for one person. <laughs> <laughs> we see how long it takes for them to admit that they're like, I don't know, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> but nobody knows which person doesn't know about the topic. <laughs> yeah, it's a grab bag every week. <laughs> um, so this week's topic is the curse of Tippecanoe. Does the curse of know? what? The curse of what? Tip a canoe. Tip a canoe. T i p p e canoe. <laughs> Which apparently is also known as Tecumseh's curse, but I don't. I like the curse of Tip a canoe. Wait, because when wow. you say it the second time, it sounds Egyptian, but when you say it the first time, it sounds Native American. So it's now it's Native American. It's Native American. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, good, because that was my first assumption. And and Egyptian, curse, I, I Egyptian curses are, are, are a thing. Yes. Yes. Uh, but it's I didn't a political know curse. It's a what? It's a political You're curse. You're on fire with my, my topics. <laughs> a political curse. Is it a Chris, I think I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it's, it's, so a it's a political curse. curse. Oh, man. Uh, about was... about invading other people's uh, places. Some <laughs> some dude some dude invaded uh, uh, native sacred lands, and they said a, a, a curse on you. All may all of your bacon be burned. But Tippecanoe um, <laughs> went with who were the Western explorers that explored the West? Uh, Lewis and Clark. Yes. No, that's too early. Tip Canoe is later than that, I believe. Uh, Wait, uh, I know this name. Uh, uh, Joseph Smith? <laughs> they weren't really explorers. Wow, so I feel like, I feel like this is... Explorers. <laughs> no, I'm making uh, What was it? The, uh, the cannibals. Um, uh, the Donner the Party? Was involved. I don't, nope. I don't know if the Donner Party, I mean, I guess technically they're part of Manifest Destiny and going westward, but I don't think they're like the success story. <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on how you define success, well, Allison. Okay. It all circles around. Do, wow, how do you define it, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Look, how far west did they get? That's the question. <laughs> I don't know. Donner Party so, so tip, tip a canoe. Oh man, I, I I definitely remember that I learned something about this at some point in my life. 
There's definitely so, a Wikipedia wormhole that you went down at one point. There's, so I, I mean, that that severely limits it to like all of life that I've experienced so far. So we just take parts out of that. What I know. I know. It is a thing that 20, you learned at some point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know though. I don't know though. This is an American history in the way that you would have been taught it. Like, would you be taught about curses? This is, we're going to circle back to like the public education system. <laughs> what we all learned. Why isn't the public education system teaching about curses? <laughs> yeah, I think in this case, though, I learned it like in conjunction with so the canoe. Like it wasn't, I don't think it was school related. I think that it was like further, further studying related. I, I think I recall reading about it in a library while doing research on president <laughs> president man what presidents have i researched too many of them to count did you have to do a lot of like um, president reports I, I probably know more than the average person i mean but do you have a favorite president uh historically not particularly. Um, sure, I think Grover Cleveland was the first guy to have a bathtub in the White House. But I might be wrong about that. I thought for sure you were going to say Taft for some reason. I was just like, Gary's a Taft guy. A Taft There's man. Taft to the big mustache, right? Taffy man. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I do not have a favorite president. I uh, regretfully know very little about uh, most American presidents. Um, I did have a favorite president in satire uh, for most of my high school years, which was Nixon. Uh, I used to enjoy making fun of him. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I don't have a favorite president. <laughs> There's a great columnist for the Miami Herald. He may be retired now. I don't know. I don't even know if he's a great columnist. He wrote a lot of books. Um, Dave Barry's his name. And one of the books I read, my parents had these books. I don't know anything about the guy, but one of these books I read, he was talking about the essence of humor and his example was, weasels make everything funny. He said, here's a picture of Richard Nixon wearing a necktie. Here's a picture of Richard Nixon wearing a neck weasel. And that neck weasel thing has always stuck with me and associating neck weasels with Richard Nixon. Yeah, so like the neck weasel is something that I got from my roommate. So uh, just adding weasel to everything, uh, that, that concept is something that my college roommate also shared with me. So the neck weasel, and, and, and in fact, that, that example, Richard Nixon wearing a necktie and Richard Nixon wearing a neck weasel is something that I think he quoted verbatim at me. So, yeah. Per yeah. Pervasive humor from parents' books. Yeah, Weird. well, and that's definitely, that definitely coincides with uh, his uh, humor style. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. There, there, wow. That would be a sidetrack to talk about Dave Barry on this particular podcast. I really, I'm going to have to look more than a sidetrack than Nixon. Or... Uh, so, <laughs> like Nixon, though, is at least in politics. That's it true. is a political curse. And the curse is. God, I don't know. I, I got nothing. Who do you think? Kurt was the originator of the curse. Tip a canoe. <laughs> a kayak, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um. I know Wait, it's a is tip a canoe is tip a canoe like some sort of like a uh, word that is a made up word that is actually a word that sounds like something else like it sounds like a real word but it's like what it actually means is tip a canoe <laughs> like tip a cow like oh yeah chief tip a cow <laughs> and that's what the curse is really based around it's just like <laughs> chief, oh, you're chief not cow gonna, tippin you will not have a successful voyage on that ship yes. you're always going right to <laughs> exactly it's like oh know, yeah the curse of tip a canoe i know that one you know what i think it's more recent I think it's more recent. I don't think it's back in the Aurora I I year era. I think it's maybe um, uh, well, my grandfather, my grandfather's life. I think he was a young man. 
Maybe not. How so in the last 90 years. 92? <laughs> okay. Is it in his lifetime or no? It's pretty. Um, well, it's it's spanning. I mean, the curse is is eternal. When did... so... <laughs> oh. But I mean, it started also. It started in the 1800s. Oh, wait. It's a political curse. Is 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 the curse of Tippecanoe? Maybe eternal is, is a that better. What life. started C-SPAN? Is that what started C-SPAN? Start the start of C-SPAN. Yeah, television network. Like that's the curse of Tippecanoe. Live politics all day. Oh, I see. That sounds like <laughs> a curse. A little curse to me. Probably not. No. No. Probably not. Okay. Veto. Veto. <laughs> I think we're going to need some more information to talk further about this. Uh, I can't. I, I, I just enjoy knowing... watching you try to figure out how much of it you remember and then making stuff up to like fill in the gaps. I think that's oh, really what this show is so, all about. <laughs> Here's the frustrating thing. Like really even though it's audio, watching Gary, totally worth it. <laughs> so it's, it's really frustrating when you know nothing, or it's easier when you know nothing on the topic because you can talk like expansively. But now that I've limited myself, like apparently I know enough about the topic to shoehorn into one single area. And the problem is I can't speak any further in there without sounding a complete buffoon. That's and the that's, that's the I know that's the point, but I can't bring myself to well, sound like a complete would... buffoon intentionally. <laughs> Well, I do it all the time. It's just sure not intentional. Oh, I, I mean, what would potentially be so bad that someone would curse someone? Or like, what would the outcome be that you'd just be like, oh, what a drag? Um, so the curse is that you will have to be reelected over and over and serve as politicians for the rest of your life. That's the curse. <laughs> the two, uh, the, no, the curse, term limit. The curse is... Like, <laughs> The curse is probably um, dying in office. And it was brought about by some whack deal uh, where we stole native land, but paid them in like six duck feathers or something and <laughs> walked away with like a million plus acres. Um, so the curse of Tip Canoe is that the negotiating party, party, party? Um, the negotiating party ends up dying in office as a politician. That's the curse of Tiffany Canoe. Uh, by drowning. <laughs> that's so specific, that last part. <laughs> There's the canoe part. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's the tip of canoe. So I also want to know, is Tip Canoe, is that like a real name or is that like a, is that like an angry white man picking on the native name? Like Tip Canoe's name was Tip Canoe or was that a name that was given to this individual that I don't I don't know I imagine it's like a legit name well I imagine that it's anglicized yeah anglicized from something that but from what I can't tell you I didn't I didn't yeah. dig deep into the <laughs> the origin of the etymology of the word <laughs> we're gonna start this we're gonna start so it's like a it's the name of a county, it's the name of a river, it's the name of a battle, it's the name of this curse. Um, We're going to start like episodes in the future, like, can you please use the topic in a sentence? <laughs> it's a sentence or something. <laughs> like I, was, I, was, I was driving through central Kansas and I was struck by the curse of Tippecanoe and my car ran out of gas. Oh, I was thinking if you're driving central Kansas, Tippecanoe would probably be related to... Um, corn related digestive issues. Oh, interesting. See, now I'm going down the rabbit hole of like, where did Tippecanoe come from? All right, here we go. Derived from a Miami, Illinois word for buffalo fish. Wait, for buffalo, buffalo which fish. Which has nothing to do with the curse, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> so, is this those really big fish? No, those are called group. But I guess it's okay. River, so. Um, yeah, so let's, let's talk, let's, let's, let's be educated. What's the curse of typical? Let's be educated. <sighs> now that I've gone down the rabbit hole of like, I'm not even on the right page anymore of my notes. <laughs> Which, by the way, I feel like I could write a book report every week about like, what? <laughs> the deep dive that I do on the internet. Um, so the curse of Tippecanoe is used to describe the death of presidents that were elected or reelected 
in years that were divisible by 20, usually ending in a zero, obviously. Um, so starting with William Harrison through JFK. And then um, it kind of continued because Reagan had the assassination attempt, and uh, but then George W. Bush survived A-OK, -okay, despite he also had an assassination attempt. So, and a shoe thrown at him. And a shoe, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. And they, they listed three, they, they listed um, the shoe, the assassination attempt, which was a grenade, which is like very legitimate in my opinion. Um, wow, then, that is legitimate. And then a, a pretzel choking, the pretzel choking incident, which I don't know about the pretzel choking thing. Yeah, unless the pretzel was put there by someone from like Pennsylvania. Yeah, you know, like, yeah like, I don't know. So I, I forgot about the grenade thing. Was that really, was that news when it happened and I just missed it or? You know what, oddly enough, I was like, <laughs> I brought it up because I was just like, I don't remember this at all. Was this even like on the thing? Um, and it was in, when was it? I vaguely remember a failed assassination attempt. Yeah. But it was like really dumb. Why. Like it wasn't like. No, it was like they threw the grenade and it didn't go off. Um, and it was during a meeting with the Georgian president. Um, and they didn't even tell them about it until like after the event was over. So that's how, like, that's how, there was no like, nobody was like tackling anybody. Or, like, oh, everybody throws grenades at, at yeah. politicians here. It's, it's not even a thing. It, it, most of them don't go off. <laughs> where, yeah, where are you getting grenades? To bring it back to no, soccer, I don't, I don't know. I but to bring it back to soccer, Georgia, right? I've seen, I've seen clips of soccer matches with, with grenades thrown onto the field. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? See, yeah. That's the kind of intense sports that we're into. Yeah, exactly, Gary. <laughs> Take that football. Man, I, <laughs> I got really drunk at a football game and fell under the road chairs in front of me once. It's pretty <laughs> hardcore. That I, I, there's a book that I was reading and I'm kind of in the middle of, but I, I, I paused it so I could read um, my coworker Siobhan's book. Uh, called How Soccer Explains the World or something to, to that effect. And they, it looks, or How Soccer Explains Globalization. And it, it looks at soccer in different countries and, and how uh, those countries are affected by globalization and, and the soccer cultures in those places. And some of those places, like he goes to like, uh, Russia, I think, and and um, I don't remember exactly everywhere, but but the, the, like you think about like soccer hooliganism here, and it's like a bunch of drunk dudes jumping up and down, like, and it's not a big deal. But you go to other com countries, and soccer hooliganism is like basically gang violence, and in other places, it's literally like legitimately used as a recruiting tool for rebel armies. Wow. Soccer like the soccer team. It's like so nationalist that it brings in like all the people that are super nationalist for their country or their regime or whatever. And that, that, that is used as a tool to uh, form militias. Hmm. It's pretty fascinating. <laughs> so, uh, so that's uh, the curse of Tippett canoe is, is interesting because we have an election coming in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I'm totally depressed about it. I feel like now it. we are on a watch list. <laughs> Unless, un well, no, that wouldn't happen either. Let's, let's take, so let's, let's, let's for a moment set the political conversation aside and let's look at um, like um, uh, public servants, in this case, the Secret Service. Do you think that they take um, the curse of news seriously and that they are planning accordingly for the 2020 election? No. No. Okay. I oh, think, <laughs> I think, but I think secret service like are always like, I don't think it occurs to them to not be ready for anything. Yeah. Like, so I don't think they're preparing for it differently. I just think they're always prepared. Yeah. They let that pretzel get through though. That's all I'm saying. That is a big miss. <laughs> they were like, it was salted. We got confused. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> also though like I, I, as far as secret service 
like they're trained for the weirdest scenarios and like they talk about anxiety in positions I'm not cut out for <laughs> secret service <laughs> or maybe oh, I need without to a doubt. at it because I'm the worst case scenario person I thought you were gonna say maybe I'd be perfect for it because I have a lot of hats <laughs> Also true. <laughs> I don't think they recruit people with just like generic PI licenses, though. I think you have to be military, I'm pretty sure. I would hope so. Yeah. I, I don't but I mean, if, if, uh, if the television show Scandal is any indication, what they're really good at is just making up excuses for the president to get away from, uh, from the office and meet with his mistress. There you go. I wouldn't be good at that either. I can't lie <laughs> What a weird like, oh, job description that would be. Had to pick up some produce that we forgot. You had to get a bag of milk. I mean carton. <laughs> <laughs> carton of milk. Um, what a weird job description too. Like, like protect the president. You know, pretzels, shoe wear, <laughs> grenades, right? Um, lie about the president's whereabouts. Uh, other duties as assigned. Like what? Okay. I, I don't think like, that the job duties, the job, the job description is, is that uh, specific. I think it's pretty much do whatever the, is required. Yeah. Like, period. So there's another phenomena that I believe has happened in the last two presidential elections, or maybe I read the same article twice and I didn't realize it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was two different articles. Um, where, like, whoever is running um, against whoever gets elected, right? Um, no, it couldn't have happened in this last election because I'm pretty darn sure that Hillary Clinton still probably has a secret service detail um, being uh, Bill Clinton's spouse, right? Former presidents have, anyway, in some elections, at some point, uh, as I just beat this point to death before I actually make it, um, there's always an article about like how secret service detail falls back from the person that was not elected and they go from being a public figure to private citizen again. and on the night of the election, that's just kind of it. The Secret Service just walks away and gets in their vehicles and leaves. And I think that, that to me is the fascinating part of the relationship, that like Secret Service is with these folks all the time and they create these relationships to, to the extent that they're allowed. But I mean, it's, it's human nature, right? I mean, you're with these people all the time and you're, you know, grabbing them by the elbow and leading through the crowd and whatnot. But if they lose the election, then you're just like, bye. See you later. And that's it, you know? And then there's also like, just like the relax, not relaxed detail, but like if you're an ex-president, like you still have secret service. And like, I don't know, I remember, I just remember seeing an interview and Bill Clinton was talking about like how much he missed driving. Like he was just like, he just, and that's like, he's just like, hmm. you're not allowed to drive. And so he was just like, you just kind of miss going and like running errands or just like actually just even going for a drive. Yeah, I, I would have absolutely no interest in being president. That's why they all write books. It's because they've got nothing else to do with their time. Without, <laughs> <laughs> can't get away from their secret service detail. So what else am I gonna do? I'll just write a book. I, I just, you know, like think about the role, right? Like, all right. You know, you you have to be part of one of these teams, right? And and defend your team. But at the same moment, you sort of have to like be somewhat independent and try and like lead this nation that is pretty well watched and observed around the world. And um, you know, don't act like an ass and make a fool of yourself anywhere. Like that's a. Oh, I don't know that that's like part of the job description insane. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. Depending in fact, on what in fact, bar, I think what bar I, you're sitting here. I think that I think that acting like an ass uh, and making a fool of yourself is is actually included in the job description now. Uh, I read uh, this morning that Kanye is considering a 2020 run. So there you go. Thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still allowed yeah. to vote in national elections. Thank goodness. <laughs> actually, actually, to to further that point about Kanye, Kanye said that he he would have voted for Trump had he voted, which means that he wants to run for president in 2020, but he didn't even, he didn't even vote, vote yeah. in the, to elect the current president. Yeah. I think there should be like a restriction to like, okay, if you've never voted before, you can't run for president. 
I think they at least like a bare minimum. That's a pretty low bar. Disagree. Strong disagree. I don't think having voted is a requirement to be running for president. I feel like you kind of need to. A few experiences in voting would be helpful for the position, though. You kind of need to know. I, what. I don't argue that it would be helpful for the position. I think that the 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 requirements that we have in place are sufficient. Now, whether or not you as an individual are electable is a completely different part of the conversation, and I think that comes out during the uh, the campaign cycle, right? It's like or you've, not you've not voted. Do you understand how this like politics thing works? Or Are not. More than looking? <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. God. We do need like a nasty thread on political show where we can all just. We'll all we'll just be bitching this. about the same thing. It'd be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it would be pretty, pretty one sided. Um, so I think we're at I the like point the where we like can... I feel like I could, I, could, I could take the other side. Well, of course, we can all take the other side, but nobody wants to. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's certainly true. Because <laughs> we're all trying Can to we be still... like polite adults. <laughs> yeah, we've done pr a pretty good job of that for 1,011 episodes. I know. Nice work, people. Um, we, we reached the part of the show where I get nervous. Um, but I also feel like we reached the part of the show where we have like firmly inserted ourselves like on a national watch list, uh, <laughs> looking forward to the 2020 elections in the first of typical. That's true. I am. So, uh, I'm crossing the border into your fine nation this weekend, uh, so I will see how that goes. Um, luckily, so if next Thursday comes around, we've not heard from Allison. We are. We know what's happened. Yeah, she's been abducted by the Secret Service. Call. Yeah. Yeah. Either, yeah. I'm. I'm in a canoe somewhere, just adrift. <laughs> you can't find oh, me. Yeah. This is a depressing oh. episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll make up for it in the question section, which happens now. Do we have any user submitted questions? No, we don't. I just yeah. looked. <sighs> well, well. Yeah. Okay. I could. I mean, I could make something up. Okay, fill fill in the blank. Uh, Taylor Swift is blank. Weasel. A <laughs> <laughs> See. Super effective. Taylor Swift is. I'm sorry, I lived with that joke for a year, and it's still funny every it's still time. Funny. It's funny to me, and I don't even know these people. Um. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know that I could. Taylor Swift is a musician. I feel like that's yeah, I was gonna say Taylor Swift is a singer. <laughs> um, you guys are so logical. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I, Taylor I don't Swift. have strong opinions about T Swift. Okay. I get Taylor Swift and um, someone else I can't name confused. So Katy Perry. No. Um, okay. Somebody's somebody's daughter. Like, I, I, I think. Know. Oh. Oh, Miley, Miley Cyrus. My, yes. Yeah. They're different. I know people. they're not very different. Yeah. Well, I'm, Miley I'm aware is of that now very insane and yeah. taylor swift is just very vain and she for a for a while like was the driving force in album sales yeah so she's got a smart marketing team and M miley cyrus's godmother is dolly parton so there's that wow yeah because it, all comes, it <laughs> all comes back to, to dolly yeah as, huh. as it always should Always. Um, Dolly Parton is actually, I think, she co-wrote a song on Miley Cyrus's new album. There's some quantum entanglement happening here, I feel. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. What is your favorite thing to order for brunch? Uh, eggs Not breakfast, Benedict and brunch. <laughs> eggs Benedict and Florida orange juice. Uh, breakfast burrito. Okay. Mm with tofu mm. scramble yes. mm. and wait pulp or no pulp Harry. oh pulp always pulp <laughs> pulp always pulp <laughs> yeah. any preference on pulp on your end chris uh in my juice um <laughs> and your burrito versus your music <laughs> uh not heavy pulp my, my 
Yeah, minor pulp. Not <laughs> like the deep, pulp. not like the, the the deep, like you're eating like a chunk of orange pulp. You know, like sometimes they're like, re- it's like really like grainy and, and stringy. Yeah, that's really what I want is like an ice cold orange in a glass. <laughs> yeah. I want more like orange Julius pulp like thickness. Mm. Well, I'm gonna eat when this is over. <laughs> That's again another theme. Um, <laughs> okay, and my last question, yeah. which I I'm not sure if I've asked or discussed with you previously, but do you have any phobias you'd like to break? I can't remember if we've discussed this on or off podcast. Um. Huh. I feel like I do okay with phobias. Like I used to be afraid of heights and then I got a job in an auditorium in college and trapezed around up there and went from like shaking so bad I couldn't walk on the grid above a stage to like confidently strolling back and forth. And that was cool. Right. Although I guess these days I probably had a little bit more up on a ladder. I looked down and go, oh dear. Uh, yeah. So it's come back a bit. But, but that's less of a phobia here. and more of a just realistic, I'm kind of up high. Yeah, I have yeah. that. I have that too, but it's not like on a ladder. Um, I used to be to the point where getting on a ladder would, would freak me out, but now it's more like um, we're at a national park and we're right next to a cliff, and my kid is like right on the edge. And I'm like, oh my god! Oh! <laughs> and that's um, that's like a like <laughs> restraining the urge to like reach out and grab them back. <laughs> Don't look over the edge of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> but they're they're far better about it than I am. <laughs> like they they at least at least my daughter, who's the one that would be the one that was right next to the edge, is like she she knows her limits and she knows like she's far more careful than I would be. So so I feel like if I did intervene, then I would cause more problems than just letting it be. So I just kind of like oh god, I'm gonna look over here. Like the chaos of you being like no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Because it would totally be that, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, and I picture the Grand Canyon in this instance, where apparently there's no barriers. In my right. Head. Yeah. Well, if there were the barriers, she'd be the one that was like climbing on the top. Like, <laughs> yeah. The Let me see. I can't see. Yeah. I, can't, I can't see the biggest <laughs> canyon. <laughs> right. Yeah. This fence is blocking me. Well, and that's all my questions for this week. So. I'm thinking a lot about phobias right now. Um, well, I guess apparently I have a phobia of a clock, right? Running out of time. Because every week right about now, I start to Countdown. sweat. Yeah. yeah. I, will, I will say that, that it, it, it says less than a minute, but I saw it change when it went from two minutes. So it's, it says less than a minute, but what it actually means is less than two minutes. This time. Yeah, it maybe it's different, but I definitely flip to that at two minutes. Uh, so now we just watch it disintegrate? Yeah. Time is an illusion. Ten, nine, eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's not less than a minute. <sighs> right, it's not. It's totally not. <laughs> and with that, it's another episode I used to be of afraid Binary of Jazz. Um, Thanks for listening. It's when I watched Jaws, I was always afraid about the bath that like a shark would come out in the bathtub. But I was really young at the time. Never happened. I would fit through there. Anyway. Where would the shark have come from? The drain? I was, a, was young and irrational. I'm older and irrational, but there's still no sharks in the bathtub. <laughs> Let the Lego shark you take into the bath with you. Well, that, I was thinking like something that could devour me. A Lego shark, I mean, come on. A few bites, you'd be out of the tub immediately, you know? I don't know. Maybe if it was a swarm of them. I, I was swarm not of Lego here. sharks. I yes. think I had a single Lego shark. My son probably has two, maybe three. Yes, if you've got two, then they can multiply. Nature well, finds things a way. Afraid of. <laughs> Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. 
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. 